11 through 14. For, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. These verses right here that we're looking at demonstrate the timelessness of God's grace. In the past, it appeared to all men when Christ was born into the world. In the present, his grace teaches us how to live godly lives. In the future, it will appear at the glorious return of Christ for the believer. God's grace is inescapable. God's grace insists, excuse me, God's grace instills a desire to please him in four ways. Number one, rejecting sin, that is disowning ungodliness and denying one's passions for lust. Number two, ruling by ruling self through sober living. Number three, by respecting others through righteous living that mirrors one's relationship with Christ. And number four, by, by reverencing God with a disciplined devotion. God's grace should not be an excuse for sin, but a motivation for holiness. All right? Motivating, motivating, for holiness, right? Pursuing holiness, chasing holiness, obtaining holiness. It's all active, right? We should be pursuing God's holiness. That's what he's called us to do, pursuing God's holiness. I love number four because salvation many times, many times, many times, a lot of times this happens to too many Christians that I've known in the past where they feel that being saved gives them a license to sin, gives them a license to sin because they know that they're saved. And so now they can just, a lot of times that, you know, I wonder, you know, I don't know everyone's heart, but a good tree produces good fruit. A bad tree does not produce good fruit. 